Um, that, that's the general overall part of that section. Uh, the second area is you can't vote on any contract, or no, excuse me, this board can approve any contract that any one of you has a financial interest in. And I talk about you vote. I mean, the board can't do it. For instance, if if um, if, if Ronnie's wife owned uh, the company that sold all the supplies to City Hall, even if he recused himself, you can't vote. You can't take an act that one of you has a direct financial interest in. You can't fix that by recusal. It just can't happen. Okay, that's section 101. Uh, one. Section two, you can't do anything, and, and that's direct or indirect. Like you couldn't buy. From his company, you can't buy from his wife's company. You can't buy from his child's company. You can't benefit any member of your family directly. Uh, the, 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 the next one, 105 2, you can't do anything. You can't use your official position to benefit a member of your family. Now, and I'm not saying put any money in your pocket. Remember, 101 was talking about putting some money in your pocket. Uh, or, or 105 1. 2 says you can't do anything to benefit a member of your family perfect example. You guys couldn't get together and say, we are going to appoint someone uh, 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 chief of police if he promises to never give our kids traffic tra tra tickets. Something like that. You can't use your position to get a benefit to somebody in your family. That, that's a violation of law, too. Alright. Those two are pretty clear areas. The difficult area is when you say, I, I, I'm not doing anything wrong here. What I'm doing is right and above board, and, and uh, there's, no, there's no reason for me not to vote on this issue. But some members of the public out here might be looking and might think otherwise. That first law I quoted says you're supposed to, you're supposed to aspire not to do things, even if they're okay, that the public doesn't believe is okay. Um, can, can I use what you've been doing as an example, John? Right. Gary quit working for, for, for Levin's construction. Gary, Gary does not work for, for Jimmy Levin's in any way, shape, or form anymore. Has no, no financial connection or tie to him at all. So he's not prohibited. He has no direct or indirect interest in a contract that, that he make money on. He has no family members. He has no, nothing that he would do that would benefit himself. But he worked for Jimmy Levin's before he came on the board. He gets up and recuses himself from votes on payments to Jimmy Levins, not because it's, he, it's a violation of one of those two laws, but one of these people out here might say, you know, Gary used to work for Levins, and, and, and they might still be good buddies, and Gary's probably voting yes on this just because Jimmy was his buddy, and that's, you know, that shouldn't be the right thing to do. One of them might think it's suspicious because he used to work for Levins. So, so, so even though Jim, he could vote, it's not illegal, he gets up and leaves because he does not want it to appear to the public that maybe he's too close to Jimmy and shouldn't be voting on those things. That's very difficult. The, the, the Ethics Commission takes a very, very hard line uh, when you ask them for advice. Okay? They're, li they're like your lawyer. They are as careful and, and hardcore as they can possibly be. They say if there's ever an issue that you're completely innocent, you're not doing anything wrong, your, your vote is, is completely entirely above board and it's not a violation of law. But if anybody out here in this audience or anybody in town thinks that by you voting that, you, you might create, uh, you, you might breach the public trust or create suspicion or you might cast the city in a bad light because somebody out there thinks you shouldn't be voting, then the Ethics Commission says don't vote. It's, it's kind of like, you know, if, if they tell you, you know, you need to bring your umbrella tomorrow when you leave the house. Well, if it doesn't rain, you don't need the umbrella, but if it does rain, you need it. Well, I mean, you, you, you have to make your own choice on that. Is it going to rain or not? Is, it, is there something wrong or not? But just saying, I advise you to take your umbrella every day, well, that's, that's the safest way. I'm going to make sure you don't get wet. But just because I tell you take it doesn't mean it's going to rain. The point is this. Uh, can you vote on a school board trustee based on, on some relationship you might have with someone at the school district? Uh, no. As long as you don't use, let, let's go back to those three statutes, as long as you don't use your official position, as long as one of you doesn't say, 
I'm going to vote for you provided you give some benefit to my family member. As long as you don't do that, then, then it's not a violation of law. Then the question becomes, do you think that the public doesn't trust you because you vote on a school board member? If, if you think that it would, it would uh, cause trouble in the public trust or, or something like that, cast you or the city in a bad light, you should not vote. Um, if, if you're satisfied that the public knows that what you're doing is above board and you don't think any reasonable person could object to it, then you can make the decision to vote. Uh, this is Long Beach, and, and, and people have strong opinions on all sides of every single issue. So the only way to be absolutely certain you never get an ethics complaint is, is, is be as absolutely safe as you can possibly bring. Bring that umbrella out every single day, no matter what. If, if, if you think there could be a question on this issue, don't vote. Right, that's, that's but then again, once you have an opinion, you're better served to follow that opinion, even well, though it, it's an opinion. It, it, the, uh, yeah, the, the, an ethics opinion is just that. It's just their opinion. It does not mean it's, it, that it's, it, it's correct. You could do something different and not violate the law. But if you want to be safe, if you want to make absolutely sure that nobody can ever be critical of you, follow the ethics opinion and they can't. It's like Attorney General's opinion. You can ask the Attorney General for his opinion and he can tell you what it is. I've done it many times and, and disagreed with it several times and gone to court and won both times. That sounds like a good average, but two out of a hundred times I've disagreed with it. The other 98 times he's been right. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not a good average. but. Uh, yeah, you're safe if you follow it, but you need to understand the Ethics Commission errs on, on the side of caution as much as they possibly can. That they say, they don't use any common sense, they don't use any judgment, they don't use any, any uh, consideration of the circumstances, they just say, if there's any possible way that somebody might be suspicious of what you do, don't vote. And that way nobody can ever be suspicious. I don't know if that helps, but... It, but that's generally. And I understand this doesn't affect Mr. Caruba anymore. No, yes. it doesn't. Matter of fact, I like to pass these out. That's up today. That's, that's as of yesterday. This, is this all uh, one packet this, thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So we should. Uh, oh, this one packet. I'm used to being in the classroom and passing one sheet at a time. Becky, what is the day, the final day that we have to appoint some more? Uh, well, your ordinance states that you will appoint at the first meeting in February or to whatever meeting you may adjourn to or recess to. They have to go to a school, I believe the school is in March, mm -hmm. and they have to, that's when their term actually begins is in March. Uh, so you have to give time for, for whomever to get registered and attend, but I don't see where it would be a huge deal if y'all need to put it off to the next meeting. Yeah, I think one, it, uh, it, can, it I mean, has happened before. Can, can I add one more thing? This, this, I don't know if this is going to make it worse or better. The opinion you're looking at, the, the question is, okay. make two no, aldermen... No, that's, not, that's not what... This is something that I want to hand out. I'm sorry. This is put in the I would like here. to put this in the record. What, what is it? It's a packet that I've prepared on, on ethics in response to uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Alderman, Ms. Uh, Alderman Anderson's, <laughs> Ms. Ms. Alderman Anderson, <laughs> to her opinion. Uh, this is my response to it. Uh, I wanted to put it in there as well. Uh, basically, what it is, is um, I received an opinion that uh, Ms. Anderson provided us with that said, Two aldermen whose spouses are employed by a municipal school separate district, they, they should recuse themselves. But in talking to the uh, uh, Tom Hood, executive director of chief counsel today, uh, he advised me that the uh, Ethics Commission has consistently advised city council members and aldermen who have relatives that are employed by the municipal school districts or who do business with the municipal school district, recuse themselves from making any appointments to the school board whenever the presence was not needed to maintain a quorum. And then an opinion that he had attached to that, he defines relatives as means spouse, child, or parent. So if you have a spouse or a child or a parent, you shouldn't vote on this. And anyone that benefits from the school board as well. And, uh, yeah, the benefits of that direct benefit that we're talking right, about. Right, right, right. And I, I believe Ms. Anderson's uh, office is in this building. 